All right, so I kept the iPad Pro 12.9 inch over the iPad mini. And let's get into why exactly I did that. As the return period came to an end, I was really thinking about whether or not the iPad mini was gonna be worth that price tag for me. And I was debating whether to just trade in my iPad Pro 12.9 inch from 2018 um, into Apple because I would have essentially just covered the cost of the iPad mini. Now, the reason why I didn't came down to a few key points, which we'll get into in a second. But essentially, I did return the iPad mini 6 and essentially I kind of regret it, but I don't also regret it. If I had to choose between one of these, which I kind of had to do at this moment in time, it came down to the bigger iPad. And now let's get into the reasons why. So first up, let's talk about the size. Now, when it comes to the size, the iPad mini 6 had a really nice size because of how small it was and how light it was compared to this big hefty 12.9 inch iPad. Now, that size did also come with some sacrifices and some compromises coming up from a bigger iPad. And that, that's obviously a something that you kind of expect going in, but I didn't really, I guess I didn't really see how much I enjoyed the bigger screen until I started using the smaller screen. Screen real estate is one of the biggest things that I found that I really wanted. And even though like in Safari, you got that kind of the full web browser and you have the full websites available to see, it still was not the same as seeing it on the 12.9 inch. Having the website be much larger, even though it's the same information, was a very nice feature feature of the 12.9 inch. And even though I found the iPad mini extremely nice for content consumption, it's not the same if you're trying to share what you're watching with someone in a setting such as a airplane, for example. And that's something that also came into play with my decision was coming up, I'm gonna be going over to New York and that's going to be about a six hour flight there, six hour flight back. And essentially I wanna have my iPad with me for me and my girlfriend to watch things on that we download on the iPad so that way it'll make the airplane ride a little bit nicer, a little more comfortable. And I was thinking about the iPad mini six and it just seems too small to share amongst two people. If I was on the plane by myself and I was just trying to read and just trying to watch something myself for myself, that'd be a perfect size, that'd be amazing. But when it comes to sharing what you're watching or maybe even playing like a video game on the iPad and, and sharing that with someone, it's just not the same. And especially like for board games like Backgammon and stuff like that, the larger screen does kind of come into play with that. That's something that really factored into my decision. Now, a lot of my videos on my channel have been relating back to college students because for pretty much all of my YouTube career, I was a student, I recently graduated, but I still take notes on my iPad and I'm actually starting to for my engineering and training license. And essentially what I found is that I really like the larger form factor of the screen. It's much more like the size of an actual paper and also allows you to have more detailed notes. Now, when it comes to just small day-to-day -day notes and maybe journaling, that's where the iPad mini 6 would absolutely shine. And that's why I really loved using it for it. But when it comes to this 12.9 inch, just for notes, for studying and for reviewing, especially since a lot of my engineering notes are from a larger screen, it's a lot nicer to even view those on my iPad than it is on the iPad mini 6. So that's enough for about, you know, the size comparisons or like the issue of the size. But what about the next issue? All right, next up I have productivity. And when it came to how I was gonna use the iPad, I was kind of trying to debate whether or not I wanted a laptop replacement slash tablet or just pure tablet, because that's kind of how I view those. With the iPad mini 6, you're getting a tablet. It's too small to really make it a workhorse device. There's no magic keyboard. And even if there was, it's so tiny that I would not be able to type on it. But when it comes to the iPad Pro, you can kind of have it as a laptop replacement. I have the magic keyboard, as you can see back there. And that's pretty much almost like a laptop. Not quite there, but for the times that I want that more laptop-like experience, that, that kind of setup is perfect. But when it comes to a tablet, then I kind of just sacrifice on the bigger size and I just use a larger tablet. And that's kind of what I found that I wanted more. One thing that comes with productivity is multitasking. And when it comes to multitasking, I found it a lot more useful to use it on the iPad Pro because of how large the screen is. Now I know multitasking is not quite to the level that everyone wants it to be, or at least that I would want it to be. But at the same time, when you have two apps side by side open, it's essentially like having two iPad mini apps open on the iPad Pro screen, at least when you have the iPad in the landscape orientation. But when it comes to using it on the iPad mini, I just found it to be more useless than useful because of how little information you're able to see. It's kind of like you have 
a smaller iPhone, like an iPhone mini size app on each side, which I just felt like it wasn't, um, it wasn't useful enough for me or I wasn't able to use it as much as I can on this iPad Pro 12.9 inch. Now when it comes to productivity, you can't be productive if the battery dies on you because then you don't have a machine to use for your productivity needs. And that's what I found with the iPad mini six. It just didn't provide this the battery life that I needed. Now, if you're just not so much a power user, you're do using it as a regular tablet for content consumption and reading and whatnot, you're gonna be perfectly fine. It's not really that big of a deal, but for me, I spend a lot of time either on Affinity Photo, sometimes on LumaFusion, and also Photoshop and Lightroom, and I found those apps just kind of drained down the battery for me. Now, it could have been that just my unit was defective or something was wrong with it, and I needed to do a factory reset to kind of optimize the battery a little bit better or just maybe use it longer term. So that one is somewhat inconclusive, but overall the iPad Pro will for sure last you a lot longer than the iPad mini will. I can get multiple days out of my iPad Pro, but I couldn't get past like a day and a half with the iPad mini. And that also just comes with how I used the iPad mini. And also I found that the screen was just a little bit more usable on the iPad Pro because of the screen brightness and it just seemed like a better display overall. Now lastly, I just wanna to touch on Pro features. And essentially this is not that different because I have the 2018 iPad Pro and there's not much of a difference when it comes to comparing it with the features you get out of the iPad mini. Essentially they're like the same thing except just one is shrunken down. And what you're gonna get that's different is the ProMotion display on the iPad Pro versus a 60 hertz display on the iPad mini. Now I'm not talking about the jelly scrolling issue per se because I really found that that kind of went away after a while. It just felt like things were a little bit slower on the screen and I know not everyone's going to notice this, but I did, especially since I have the iPhone 13 Pro and I'm seeing 120 hertz on there. I was seeing 120 hertz on here. My laptop it has 140 hertz display, I think. It's a Windows laptop. The display doesn't, but when I use the actual laptop, I, I can see that as well. So using the 60 hertz display was kind of a step back for me. Now, if you're gonna compare a newer model, the iPad Pro to the iPad mini, you're gonna get a lot more differences, like more enhanced speakers. You're gonna get a better camera system and when it comes to some of the features again the ipad mini like center stage i don't really care for it that much i don't facetime that much or walk around while i'm facetiming enough to need that center stage feature and also i found like the quality of the camera wasn't the best it's not bad but it's also not enough for me to want to keep that device but if you're someone who really heavily uses facetime you love reading you love reading the news that type of thing you're not really power user type of person, then the iPad mini is gonna be more than enough for you. And for many people, you don't need the power of the other ones because Apple makes these super powerful even though it doesn't seem like it for the price you're paying. And even the iPad ninth generation will be more than enough for a lot of people. So keep that in mind too. You don't need to go out and spend you know, over $1,000 in your setup. I managed to get my iPad Pro 12.9 inch for almost like $500 off because Costco had some sale or something. I just found it there and I just saw the great price. I just bought it before someone else did. All right, so enough about the sidetrack. Now coming over to the final features when it comes to the Pro features versus the iPad mini, the other thing is going to be just the battery life. And also again, if you get the newer version, the power you get with the M1 chip and the RAM you get with the newer iPad Pros, because this has the same amount of RAM as the iPad mini at four gigabytes. But if you get the 2020 version or newer, you're gonna get at least six gigabytes minimum, I believe. And then it goes up from there. Obviously do your own research and find which size will benefit you and think about what you're gonna be using your iPad mini for exactly, because for me, the iPad Pro just makes more sense. Now, if you're kind of bummed about this iPad mini content no longer gonna be on the channel, don't be too upset because coming up with Black Friday and the holidays, I might get another one and I might actually keep that one. Still deciding whether or not I want to get it. I only wanna get it if I plan on keeping it. So keep that in mind and stay tuned because I have a whole bunch of other iPad content coming up as well as iPhone 13 Pro content and also accessory guides for the holidays so that way if you need help purchasing anything or any accessories, I can have some awesome things to show you. So stay tuned, make sure you like and subscribe to the video if you stuck around this long. And until next time, don't forget to take it easy with some tea.